All right. Well, uh, welcome. Um, we're going to be starting a new interview series, talking to some of the people who are helping out and doing doing the work at Corona Y. Uh, and it's my delight to to introduce Shannon. Uh, Shannon, do you want to tell us um, a little bit about uh, about who you are and where you're from? Hi. Uh, well, my name is uh, Shannon, and I, I live in the Portland, Oregon area, kind of out in the uh, the farmland out here. I work at Intel here, and uh, I. Um, was very excited to find out about Corona Y because Intel sent us home, a lot of us home, and uh, it was frustrating that uh, although Intel is very big on volunteering opportunities, a lot of the volunteering opportunities that exist involve going out of the house, and this one didn't, so I was very excited to find it. Nice, and so how did you find out about Corona Y, and, uh, and what made you join? So when I was in college, I worked with a professor who uh, got me connected with Kaggle. And very briefly, I was working on a machine learning project with him. It's not actually my area of expertise, sadly, but I stayed on their mailing list and always kind of thought, oh, maybe one day I'll get back into this. And so, of course, I got their email notifications about the Core 19 data set. And uh, I really thought, you know, this is a good chance for me to try to see if there's anything I can do from home instead of just sitting by and kind of letting this all happen around me. Um, and so I, I did go there, but because machine learning is not my area, I kind of started looking at the, the really broad scope of the initial challenge and uh, thinking, well, I'm not sure what I can do with this that's particularly helpful. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, I should try again. So I went back, you know, maybe a few, a few days later and said, I have to try and make an effort and let's see what other people are doing. Maybe that will give me some ideas. And there was Archer's posting and it basically reflected my initial feelings. Uh, such that, you know, oh, this, this competition has a very broad scope. The first thing we need to do is itemize specific actionable tasks. Uh, and I thought, yes, this guy is speaking my language. <laughs> nice. And what was it like when, so when you first, first kind of dove in, what was, what was that like? You were the first person I worked with. Um, and that was, that was so helpful because it was, it was very much of a, a maze because, you know, in the beginning it was mostly, I don't remember exactly what, what happened, I kind of think the first instruction was, oh, sign up for our Slack. And I never used Slack before, so that's what I did first. And I think, you know, I didn't know what was going on, so I, I probably just said, hi, I, I'm Shannon, here's my background, uh, put me somewhere you can use me. And you were like, oh, well, I'm working on a document, can you just be another set of eyes on this sort of new employee, employee recruiting document? Um, that's something I actually do as part of my job at Intel on occasion. We get interns every so often. I sort of have, you know, taken the lead off in times and sort of helping them get used to the environment since I was an intern there when I started. And I thought, well, you know, I can, I can read, I can write, I can do this. And I just got right in. And then you, uh, you had a lot of comm tasks for me to do in the beginning. Yeah, no, you've been, you were a huge help out at uh, communications and, and still are. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what else you've been doing around Corona Y? Because I know you've been doing a bunch of stuff. Well, so in the beginning, as I was saying, it's, it was a lot of comm tasks that I offered feedback on a lot of documents. Sometimes I wrote my own documents. I, you know, I, I wrote a LinkedIn post. I never do that. So this was the first time I ever did that, I think. And um, I uh, actually just recently did something similar. I, I wrote uh, on a data, a data science board at Intel. I got in touch with some people in the volunteering community and Intel. They actually are helping me post this volunteering opportunity in a skills-based volunteer portal. I actually just got an email update about that. I'm very excited. Oh, nice. And um, I, I, there were just basically any time someone said there's a problem and it was something I thought I could help with, then I would do it. So, so one of the earliest things that I did, there wasn't a mailing list in the beginning. And um, I sort of knocked around, you know, trying to trying to figure out how to make a mailing list with Google, Google groups. And then we quickly found that the, um, there were all these restrictions to how many people you could add per day and uh, sort of learned how to use G Suite because it's sort of more equipped to handle large businesses. And so, uh, and there were technical issues. So I was on tech support trying to get them fixed. And uh, eventually we did. So now, now we have an actual sustainable mailing list. And even that situation is still evolving because we're trying to converge um, how that's currently manually updated versus our automatic join form on the website, which didn't exist when I joined. Um, so some of the early tasks involve that sort of thing. I made a budget tracker, just, you know, odd jobs like that. Um, and I, but what I really wanted to do uh, was, you know, something to help with the vaccine teamwork because I thought, you know, this is, this might be the sort of thing that helps us actually be able to go outside again. Uh, vaccines and therapeutics are extremely important. So maybe like that would be a good area to try to help with. 
And so I, Dan I joined Dan Sosa's team. And again, I'm not a data scientist. And also I, I like, thankfully I'm still working a full-time job and also a side job outside of that. Um, and I'm <laughs> overwhelmed with stuff to do. Um, so I, it's difficult for me to, to make a, a quick material contribution in the tech area if it's data science specific. However, um, <laughs> one of the things that Dan, I thought perspicaciously noticed very early on was eventually we need to adopt some good standard practices for our code. It doesn't have to be in the first round necessarily, um, but we should, we should try to get that in shape, especially if we wanna keep moving forward with this beyond the Kaggle competitions. And um, I, it happens that at my regular job, I work in um, design automation software tool flows. So we deal with this kind of problem a lot. And there are, you know, we try things. If they don't work great, we constantly revise our ideas about what good practice would be, what would work best for our customers. And it's, um, it, it's more interesting than it might sound on paper uh, because, you know, uh, that's actually one of the things I love about Intel is that because it's a large company, it has large company problems. When you have many, many developers all over the world, and so I'm delighted to find um, Corona Y is the same kind of thing. We're a, a large group of developers all over the world and we're gonna have similar problems. Um, so anyway, I, I'm sort of part of the software development and practices team that has spun off of Dan Sosa's vaccine team. And even with that, all I've really done so far is offered my ideas of what would be kind of a good like set of starting steps to overhaul the code. And from that, people who are like between gigs, our students have actual time, have just taken off with this. And it's just, it's beautiful. I am so excited to see all the work and I'm learning a lot of stuff because we, we use tools I don't use at work. So it's, a, it's also a great opportunity for enrichment. Nice, yeah. Well, what you, so that's, those are a few things that, that are that some of their awesome parts of working there. What, what would be a couple of your pieces that are kind of your favorite parts of, of being at Corona Y and a couple of the things that are maybe a challenge in, in working in this kind of environment? This is a hard question. <laughs> working here is really great. And, and it, you're right, there are, there are a lot of ups and downs. Um, I love the people here. I love how open and helpful everyone is. And even though it can sometimes be frustrating if, for instance, I was going to do a job and someone does it before I get started with it, that's also fantastic because that means there's always someone willing to do something that needs to get done. You just have to find them. And um, I think that's really, really cool. And it also doesn't mean that like I, I don't have another opportunity to do something. So all I have to do is ask. Yeah. Nice. And I mean, you've been here since right near the beginning of, of all of this stuff starting up. What keeps you here? Um, I believe in the cause. I, you know, I, the pandemic is unlike anything I've ever seen and not just me, but like my parents, you know, they've never seen anything like this. People older than they are say the same thing and it just, it kind of blows my mind and it has been extremely hopeful that I have an opportunity, again, not to just sit by while things happen, uh, but I can try to use all this education and skill that I've been lucky enough to get to try to make a difference and um arthur hasn't given up you haven't given up so you know as long as i i have time and you know sort of the mental capacity to at least keep my hand in here you know i, I want to do that also I, I think it's so cool that the we are starting to figure out who we are outside of kaggle which is something that we were a little bit like well we want to do that but we're not sure how and then we got in touch with someone who sort of represented a potential customer and now we're talking about it, something that might change all of how we prepare for scientific research. And since, you know, I did a lot of academic, you know, undergrad research, that, that means a lot to me. So yeah. it's, it's cool to think I could be part of something that I would have wanted to use in a yeah. research setting myself. Yeah, that's extremely cool. Um, for just sort of the, the general public that's out there, what would be something you'd want them to understand or to know about Corona Y? Hmm, something I would want them to know. Oh, well, I think the first thing I'd want them to know is that even if you're not sure that you're professional enough, you shouldn't let that stop you. If you have, I mean, it's as I said, I, I'm a software engineer, but most of the jobs I've done so far have been from my, you know, like language proficiency, just in English. And it happens that that's an area that I have been strong in, but so are a lot of people. And if you're a student, you're absolutely welcome. I think we even have one kid who's in high school 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, I'm going to I'm going to paraphrase this if I don't quite remember the quote, but there was something I don't know if you wrote it or if Archer wrote it. But in one of the original welcome documents, there was this great quote that I've been sharing with people. Um, if you think or hope there's something important for you to do here, there is. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, so tell me a little bit about some of the, you mentioned kind of the people and that the people is one of the really big things about, about being here as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the people who you've connected with. Uh, you, definitely. Um, you've been so patient with me and you've been really kind. From the beginning, I, I noticed that you always complimented my work and I kind of had a feeling that maybe that was deliberate in order to keep me encouraged, but it absolutely worked. You know, I felt And also because it was great work. <laughs> That's, thank you. And, and, but, and you said so. And that's not something you always get. You know, at, at Intel, we, we do try to remind each other that that's part of our job, too, is to recognize other people's work. But you get busy. It gets very easy to forget to do that. And it, it, it helped me feel like I had a place here. And um, I would say, you know, and I've, I've connected with Dan Sosa and also the, the other people who are working uh, with him. Uh, Jun is one of our more recent people, but he's, he's just taken... A huge leap on the software overhaul and I'm just I, I think that is so cool very admirable and um and I've I've been lucky enough I've gotten to work a little bit with Archer which for me you know I'm a, in a sense I'm a little starstruck because I thought his ideal was really good and he's also taken on this insane amount of work um and he ran himself into the ground and so it's like well I, I think it's cool that on occasion I get to recognize your work and occasionally if there's some way I can help you directly that's also pretty rewarding for me because you've taken on a lot and there are countless others I could list, honestly. Like, I, I just, it's a very long list, especially between Com and DT. Mm -hmm. And everyone on the daily calls is, is really nice and pleasant to work with as well. Oh, and how could I forget Tyler? Uh, <laughs> Tyler is another person who just charged into it. Um, another person who was, has been between gigs, and so he had time, and this is how he wanted to spend it. And so he has basically, he's used all his time to just be in every corner of the company and have a great overview of what that is. And that's difficult because we're a little chaotic at times because we're continuously evolving and we're still working on structures. So Tyler has been quite inspiring to me as well. Yeah, yeah, myself as well. So when you think back or when you think about, you know, years from now, when you look back at this whole crazy pandemic situation and at your participation here at Corona Y, what do you think are going to be the kind of things that stand out for you? About working here or the pandemic in general? Both. Gosh. Um, I think one thing that's going to stand out a lot is that a lot of people did come together. And we think a lot about how we've been separated. And we do hear in the news a lot about things that are frustrating and people who are suffering from isolation and, and the bad things that happen as a result of that and supplies shortages. And of course, that's going to happen. But it's, it's really heartwarming that there are also people who are coming together and this situation has, has created a good thing. Um, I'm going to remember also that there was an opportunity like this for me and that I at least tried to get to be a part of it. Um, I'm going to remember how unusual that was. It, it's almost like being on a subreddit, but then there are actual faces with the names. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a large initially anonymous community and, and suddenly we're all together just by this circumstance and we're, we're peers and we're colleagues that's it, it's it's incredible it happened so fast and I, I didn't get interviewed to have to do that um yeah. and you know and of course i will remember you know i'll remember the things that i can't do right now but also how inventive people have been to try to get around that so for instance um in my spare time i dance and i also um play and teach piano and um i haven't had to stop doing those things they're different, but people have become resourceful. And so I can now dance in virtual sessions and I can teach over the computer. And I would never have thought I could do that. Someone actually brought it up to me as like a precautionary measure. And I thought, well, that sounds like a terrible idea. I think we should probably just wait. And of course it turned into so many weeks. So yeah, I, I can't believe how, how inventive people are becoming. Hmm. Nice. And is there any question that, what should I have asked? What's something that you would want to, to add on? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I just, I'm extremely, extremely proud to be a part of this effort and I'm extremely thankful for the people who have helped me do this. So um, 
yeah, I guess, I guess what I would want to be, if this were in a podcast episode, I would just want you to let people know how they can get involved if they want to. Wonderful. Thanks. And thank you for all of your work. I mean, you have been such a, a phenomenal part of Corona Wine moving forward. And, and yeah, so great. That means a lot. You thank do. you, Daniel. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Bye. Thanks for taking the time, Shelley. Thanks, Daniel.